Hi everyone, it's Troy from Complete Health Geelong here. Um, <clears throat> I want to show you how the narcissist is the way they are, why a codependent is the way they are, why they're attracted to each other, and sort of how it works when you're going through the relationship um, until after the relationship and what, what sort of happens with that. Um, I made this sort of graph up myself. It's not exactly the way it works, um, <clears throat> but it gives you a good visualization to to sort of wrap your head around it um, because, you know, quite often that's wrapping your head around it's the big majority part of the battle. Um, so let's get into it. So if you've been looking into a lot of self-help stuff and, and all that, you probably would have heard of um, this this timeline, time stage of development. I like Ericsson's. So basically, this, these are your ages. So your one, your two, your three, your four, you know, that sort of thing, all the way up until till death, so birth. Death. And you have to reach stages the whole the whole time to keep growing and keep evolving and and all that sort of thing. Now another thing I'd like to point out is this pyramid here. If you can't really see it, but there's a pyramid there. That has five different stages on it as well. Some have more, some have less. And that's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now I will cover both of these more in detail in other videos, but there's heaps of videos out there and and um, heaps of information on Google if you want to look them up. So basically, again, to self-actualize, I like to call it, which is like, yeah, you know, some people prefer enlightened, uh, becoming aware, hashtag woke. Um, you have to work your way up through these needs to evolve as a person. Most codependents and narcissists are stuck at this bottom one or the second one, which, so the bottom one, you know, it's it's all basic stuff like you need food, water, and all that sort of stuff. So, and these all play into the survival modes. At the end of the day, if you're living out of survival modes, well, that's all you need to get met. That's why narcissists can abuse and use because they're just trying to get those needs met. Where a codependent will come underneath and sort of manipulate their environment, the same as a narcissist, but... They're trying to get people to like them to get their needs met, where a narcissist will abuse to get their needs met. Now, up here, oh, like, again, it's it's um, not not the same for everyone. This can change. Um, it's just more often than not. Um, we plus abuse. And here, we minus neglect. Is, you know, neglect is taking away, so minus. Abuse is doing something to someone, to, so plus. Now, what what is happening? So you're going through your childhood, blah, 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 and the narcissist gets abused, you know. They usually get stuck around anywhere from, you know, birth till six Usually it's around four, two to four, something like that. That's why they act like a toddler. They rage like a toddler. They like things like that. Everything's me, me, me. They get stuck in that. Now, that's a healthy part of growing up, but not if you get stuck there. So let's just leave it at four. So they get stuck at four, and they learn to live on anger and to avoid getting hurt. They drop their empathy. So up here, they're all living on anger. What happens to a narcissist, a uh, codependent, or some people like to use the term empath? They also get stuck at around that same sort of age, maybe a little bit older, except they suppress their anger and have more empathy. Now, a lot of people like to say that this is, you know, the empath, narcissist or codependent sort of thing is a, they're a flip side of the same coin. It's not entirely true, but it, it is a good visualization to wrap your head around it. So you've got one living off anger, 
one living off empathy. Um, narcissists are more shame based, where codependent is more guilt based. And I'll go into what those mean in other videos because it's pretty tricky to explain the two differences and it'll take a while. Now, what happens is if you take, oh, so, and this is zero. So let's say this is zero because you're a normal person. Let's say you have no complex trauma. Everybody does. But let's just say you're a normal person. You go through all these stages. You keep ticking all the boxes. You keep getting older. You, you get up to the top of this. Boom, you're normal. And you go through living life like a healthy adult. Well, we've stopped ticking all them boxes. We've stopped moving all through all them um, stages. We've, we've, we're stuck here while the healthy person has worked their way to the top. Oh, yes, I'll put a little self-actualize. So, and I'll put a, a five here and a five here because that's stage five level of fucked up. So, the narcissist and the codependent. Or empath. The the empath will well, they're you know you're attracted to opposites. So as a, that's a saying for a reason, you know, opposites attract. So and you got to remember they're both stuck at four years old. So an adult isn't going to be attracted to a four year old. So when you heal, you will become actually less and less attracted to narcissists because you're not attracted to four-year-olds anymore, emotionally speaking, I'm talking about, of course. And so now if we get Maslow's hierarchy of needs and put it here, You can see that while we're traveling, yeah, so if we're looking at it, we can see we're still sitting, the narcissist is still sitting here trying to get these needs met. The codependent is still sitting here trying to get these needs met. Now, if we draw a line down here and make another Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this healthy person has gone through all the steps. It just all ties in. I'm actually pretty proud of this. <laughs> um, so what happens is, as the codependent starts to get healthy or starts to um, get more resentful, more I, they were actually starting wanting things from the self. Because during the relationship with a narcissist, you will, you will give and give and give and give, right? And the narcissist will take and take and take and take. Eventually, you start getting resentful. Codependents and empaths are the worst for resentful. It'll be underhanded digs, um, backhanded compliments. It'll be um, double binds, like telling somebody, which I'll explain in another video, which so you'll be like, you should just know what I want because you know what they want. Well, you think you know. You assume a lot of things. The trouble is you're expecting somebody to know what you want without telling them. I shouldn't have to tell you, you will say to people. The thing is not everybody's brain works the same. Not everybody is, is as intuitive as you and they don't know what you want. So you're telling them off for not knowing what you want, but you haven't told them what you want. You're giving them a double, it's a catch 22 essentially. And the narcissist doesn't care. They do know, they just don't care. So, you start getting resentful. Now you start having narcissistic traits or, or they start coming out in you. And it looks essentially like this. So you start coming up here, coming up here, coming up here. This is a, you're getting healthy or you're getting towards, remember that graph, the stress curve or with the stress that I did in another video. So your stress curve is going up and you're, you're getting too strong for too long. You actually, you're starting to get to breaking point. What happens is, You'll get to somewhere around here, the breakup will happen. 
when the breakup happens, you will shoot up here and then you'll say, am I a borderline? And then you'll say, am I a narcissist? Because we all have, because as you see, you're going up towards that level now because all that resentment and everything's built up. You've given everything you could. Your cup's empty. Now, all of a sudden, you're saying, what about me? What about me? But now it's all about you. So now, what about me? What about me? What about me? And then eventually, you will come down. You will heal. And you'll come and sit somewhere back down here. You will gradually move up the steps. You'll start gradually meeting your own needs, not needing somebody to regulate your emotions like the narcissist does. And you won't go exactly, remember that in, the, in another graph I did, your emotions were all like this, which is, again, you can see it. This is especially for a borderline or you've got CPTSD. If that was that straight line that I did in the other one on emotions and your emotions are up and down, you can see how you're going narcissistic. Um like too empathic, too codependent, too narcissistic, too codependent, which is something like similar to a borderline. Now on this scale too, there's lots of different things. There's like, so borderline, narcissism, CPTSD, ADHD, ADD, they're all spectrum disorders and they all live on this line. And that's why they can all be comorbid and all that sort of thing as well. Is that they all run along this and depending on what, fight, flight, freeze or fawn mode you're sitting in will be also depending on where you're sitting on here. So now you're starting to heal and you're going to come down here and instead of having them big waves of emotions like you used to have, you're going to be sort of calm down a little bit and you're going to be sitting down here once, once you've learned to meet your own needs and all that sort of stuff. The narcissist, however, will go... Down there a little bit. They'll probably just stay there. They might get a lot worse. They might get a little bit better or something. But essentially, they just come back to where they are. And they just keep living the life the way they do. Because we know that they don't think that there's anything wrong with them. And they don't get help. And they don't heal. They can, but they won't. And they don't. It's very rare. I think I may have heard of like two cases ever. And the thing is, they need to be in constant therapy and doing constant work. If they don't, boom, they go straight back to where they were. So, yeah, don't hold your hopes on that. And this is basically the way it works for everyone. <clears throat> so, you can see here that the opposites attract. So, if you're a level five, messed up codependent or empath, you will meet a stage five level narcissist. Now, there are degrees of narcissism as well. You've got, like, healthy narcissism. Then you've got unhealthy narcissism. And then you've got MPD, which is Narcissistic Personality Disorder, which is pathological. That's totally different than someone just being selfish. So the term narcissist gets thrown around way too much. Um, and it's lost a lot of its... Um, strength and what it's actually meant to be. A narcissist is somebody that is pathologically very unwell. It's not just somebody who's um, just cares about themselves too much. It, it's a lot more than that. So if you're wondering what's being what's going on, this is a pretty good graph of it. So as you see, while it looks like they're the flip side of the same coin, they're not really. It's just that opposites do attract. And you attract to somebody of your own emotional intelligence, I suppose. Um, and again, this neglect and abuse, it doesn't always work like that. If you've been very badly neglected, you could end up a narcissist as well. Or if you've been abused, you could end up the codependent in that as well. Um, it just it just depends. It's just in the majority of cases that I've seen, this is how it usually works. <clears throat> so if you want to learn this one with Ericsson's, and this one was Maslow's. And they're, they're very, very good things to learn. And when you're trying to, to heal, it's good to be able to visualize 
where you are on any of these scales. So it sort of gives you a guide on where to go next. The same as uh, doing the Myers-Briggs personality test. I think that's very, very helpful too because it can show your strengths, it can show your weaknesses, and it'll be like reading a book on yourself. So I highly recommend doing that. I'm an um, ENFJ, if anyone wants to know that. Um, and yeah, so that's basically the graph. So I, I really, I hope that helps you and it gives you a little bit more clarity um, on what's going on. And I hope you have a good day. Cheers. Yeah, so if